Max Hicks, a CHS senior, has encountered so many traumatic changes in his young adult life, yet he refuses to use those circumstances as an excuse to stop learning. Let's now meet Max and see the inspired life he now lives. I'm a senior for 2012. Uh, music's a huge part of my life. I joined uh, the orchestra in sixth grade. At the beginning of the second semester for my freshman year, uh, my mom passed away and I had lived with her because uh, my parents divorced when I was about 10 years old. And so after she passed away, I had moved in with my dad. And so I had to really mature. And he had developed uh, emphysema in his lungs from smoking. We were staying in an apartment that was uh, also an auto body shop. He wasn't able to keep up with the rent from that house. And plus there was black mold growing in some of the work, woodwork, which had really hurt his lungs. Uh, he had gotten really sick and uh, wasn't able to you know, work even more. And then two months after my mom had passed away, I uh, joined First United Methodist. Uh, and I really jumped right into that. When I became aware that uh, of my situation in the church, and there there was people I could trust and talk to, and so uh, they all came together. And uh, one of the members there came up to me one day and asked me if I would like to live with my friend Nick. She had said she was praying about it, and uh, she had heard from God, you know, to call Lisa, uh, which was Nick's mom. You know, she said she was all up for it. You know, so that was a huge blessing in my life. It being only a few blocks from Cooper, uh, I was so set on uh, Cooper's orchestra, you know. Miss Radcliffe had always been more of a parent than a teacher, and so uh, I felt I was needed over at Cooper. When my mom passed away uh, and she had found out, uh, I was out of school a whole bunch uh, for the funeral. Uh, my uh, relatives came down from England. One day she pulls me aside and she goes, the orchestra has raised money and she handed me some gift cards for uh, different places and uh, so she had done that for me. Finances became a struggle and there was a point in time that I was over $150 in debt to uh, my private lessons teacher and I just kept getting behind and I was worried that I wouldn't be able to continue them anymore. And then uh, she said uh, she had given me a 50% scholarship on my lessons and plus she had paid the previous debt before. She hasn't only done that once, but twice. Uh, she's helped me cover my orchestra's expenses on anything I would need. I was able to work for her over the summer break in order uh, to be able to pay for summer camp, and I was able to get a scholarship there. She's just always been focusing on what I needed and if I needed anything in order to act uh, keep moving forward and not be hindered in my schoolwork or my orchestra. She's always been there and I was able to uh, rely on her. So Mondays I tutor at my church. I'll go and uh, we'll pick up kids. Uh, we'll drop some of them, uh, some of the girls off at the Palm House and you know help them through some of the things uh, they're going on uh, being so young in their life. And then um, after they're done tutoring, if they're caught up on their homework, uh, we'll go, we'll play basketball, and I'm able to uh, talk to them and uh, help them uh, through any of the struggles they may be going through. I've given Sunday school lessons. I've given uh, Sunday night speeches. My uh, hair was down to here uh, by the time I was growing it out uh, for a couple years. And then there was a lesson over change that Brett was talking about, the youth pastor and he asked me to come up and I went up and I started talking about some of the things I had done in my life, how I uh, had to move out on my own, how you know I'm ready for better change in my life. I'm not ready to uh, be defeated anymore. I'm ready to overcome all these things. And I said, as a signal to show that I'm ready to change and ready for my life to change for the better, I'm gonna do this. And I pulled out a pair of scissors and I just start chopping at my hair and uh, people are like, freaking out, you know, screaming, aren't you sad and all this. And uh, so my friend Steven came up and uh, I held my ponytail and he just like sat there and saw it away and uh, took the hair, uh, about 12 inches of it, and I donated it to Locks of Love. And if I'm willing to get, I uh, put that much energy into my hair, 
then you know that much energy that much focus then instead of doing it focusing on my hair I'm I can be able to use that energy that time that focus to put towards something better in my life you know something that I need more than long hair academically uh, I always involve myself in uh, AP classes uh, just for planning for the future a big part of my squad uh, go and I learn about computers, help the teachers fix their computers. He's been a neat kid for us because he's always volunteering. Um, even when he doesn't have anything to do on campus and he's not actually having to stay on campus, he could leave and go home. He stays after school or he comes in and does work. Uh, he's done some uh, uh, help with us on our lessons. Uh, he drew that uh, uh, user, it's the UNCHS poster and uh, he's, uh, he's really good at helping the other kids with their stuff. Uh, he likes to help facilitate, and so he's been a real aid to the club as a whole. He's got the ability to get along with anybody, and that's a skill that will do him well everywhere he goes, and so we enjoy having him in our club. As time has progressed, and he's been a very faithful student and has worked really hard, you know, there'd be some mornings where I'd drive to school and we'd have a sectional before school and it's still dark outside, and he's walking in the cold, you know, way out here, blocks away from, from Cooper, and I'd see him out on the road trying to get to, he'd be the first one here to be sectional. Some kids didn't even come, but Max, it was so inconvenient for him, more for anyone else, he'd be the one that would be here. And then there were times where, you know, he really wanted to study and take lessons, and, and you know, a kid like, like that that wants to work that hard, um, we, had, we were covering 50% of the cost for his private lessons, and I just finally said, you know what, this, we're, anything that you need, we've got it covered when it comes to your education and, and wanting to pursue, um, you know, learning more. So um, we've just kind of, we've watched him grow, and we've wanted to balance, you know, what we, what we give and what, what he needs so that he is, you know, still standing on his own two feet. Um, and he does, he stands on his own two feet. He works hard for what he's been given and he, he's great at following through uh, with what he has. He really wants the very best for himself and, and wants to, like he said, change the cycle of poverty in his life and of hardship, you know, and be able to pay back to the community and pay back to his church and, and to his friends and to his family, both the family he's living with and the families that he's touched in his past. Cooper has been blessed to have Max be a student here because he's just such a diverse individual with longboarding, and hacking sack, and mouse squad, and all of the activities that he's in. And he has in turn been blessed by the school and, and Mrs. Radcliffe and, and other teachers here, Mr. Howell and Mr. Ash. I mean, we've all been able to, to work with him and, and, and help him continue to make good decisions and help him progress in his life. The family that I'm staying with, the Robinsons, uh, it's a huge thank you to them. I've, uh, they've taken me in with open arms. They've done all they can for me. You know, I don't miss meals unless I get too busy. So it's been awesome. Uh, they've had me uh, involved in the things they do. Uh, we celebrated Christmas. Uh, I'll go to some of Nick's games. With all my family moved away, I was still able to engage in family activities and my dad, I'll call him and I'll stay in contact with him. We keep tabs and he's gotten a pacemaker, he, uh, he's had emphysema and so he's still doing what he can and he's uh, provide as an inspiration, you know, to never stop. Uh, there's always going to be a time where I'm able to take what I have been through and help somebody else. Instead of having people pull me up, I can be somewhere where I can take others and I can pull them up. He's a great student who really wants to do well and, and is just needing the opportunity to be able to grow because he is a forerunner within his family. He's defying all the odds when you think about what he has to just deal with on a daily basis. And yet he's, he doesn't seem to be aware of his limitations. He seems to be more aware of who he wants to be.